And we're recording. Okay. Hi guys, this is Last Things, and I'm here to do a tutorial that somebody asked me to do. I got a request yeah, I to do a re tutorial on how I do comic pages in GIMP. So, I spent forever trying to find a good software to do screen capture for Mac. Michaela, shut up. Shush. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So I'm going to show how I do, how do I edit a comic page and clean it up and then do screen tones in GIMP. GIMP is a free software you can get and it's one of the few free softwares that work in Mac, which Mac doesn't even come standard with paint, so it kind of stinks, but here we go. <laughs> now, if you're going to use GIMP, you're probably going to want a little bit of Photoshop knowledge first. Michaela, I will kill you. So you want to want a little bit of Photoshop knowledge because you want to know, like, I guess the lexicon, the language, you know, that you need to know to operate one of these programs, one of the more advanced image editing programs. And so this is my folder I keep my comic in. I keep things organized because I have to or I'll never find anything. Yeah. All right, so this is kind of what I recommend you do if you're planning on setting up like a long running series, get a separate folder on your computer for your comic and have pay separate folders for chapters and all that junk. But we're going to go in and open up the raw unedited version of our page first. And I'm talking really raw, this one's not even flipped over the right way, so let's find it. I apologize if the video lags a little. This program's making my computer lag like crazy. Okay, ready is this one. Know, let's go with this one. Okay. Open with. Since this one is a JPEG, it'll on a Mac it'll standard open with preview, so we want to go to open with GIMP. There. Now I also recommend if you're gonna do this. Yeah, yeah. You have a tablet. Now you don't need anything extremely fancy, I don't think. I've got a professional one, but you might want to get like at least something, you know, because it makes it a lot easier. It'll save you a lot of time. All right. First of all, I scan this upside down, which is not a huge problem. All you have to do in GIMP is go up here to the top, image, transform, rotate 180. All right, and you see, perfectly the right orientation. Okay. Now we're going to do, before I go in and crop it or anything, I'm going to show you guys how to brighten up your page and make the colors come out with more contrast. You want your blacks darker and you want your whites whiter. So I'm going to go to the top here in your image window to colors, brightness, contrast. Now I play with this a little to get it right. I usually adjust my brightness first and then mess with my contrast. Your brightness, brightness is going to make it brighter and then your contrast will make a bigger difference between the dark and light areas. So let's mess with that a little. Take the brightness down a little bit so our blacks get darker. Take the contrast up a little to make them both colors more stark against each other. And I think that's about as good as we're going to get. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to crop it. You see the page here like that and then we have the edges of the boxes we don't want the edge of the box to be shown. We want to crop all the way into the end of that line right there and to the end of the line over here. We want to look nice. So <laughs> this page is actually a little bit different from the final one. I'll show you guys in a little bit. It was I edited it and then rescanned it. So I'm going to take our boxes. Photoshop cropping works a lot the same as this. You can adjust where you're cropping it after you've already made the box and as soon as you like it you just hit Enter. And my computer's gonna lag. Come on. There we go. <laughs> okay. Now, before I go any further, let me show you this tool right here. This is a very vital tool. You have one like this in Photoshop, and this to me is why GIMP, a free program, is great. It's got this navigator box, and it's great for getting around quickly on your page and zooming in quickly and all this stuff. you got your zoom slider here and you can move the box to view different parts of the page. Now, if you don't have this up there like that, you can go up here to Windows, Dockable Dialogs, and then Navigation. And there you go. If it's not already up there. If it is, cool. <laughs> 
Now, on to the next part. This is the part that's going to make your page look really nice, but it's also one of the more lengthy parts of the whole tutorial. You've got your layers panel here. You've got just your background layer. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to leave it transparent. Just leave it new layer. You know, it doesn't really matter. And um, now what we're going to do is we're going to go over here to our toolbox and grab our pencil tool. Leave it on white right here. And anywhere you see that you d you see a color that you don't want like these little gray areas over here go in color over it with white and say oops we went on the black part well that's why we have it on a separate layer over here now the background you can't destruct it when you go in to fix that back there we go that's why we put it on a separate layer we don't want to destroy our background as we're working to clean it up but you can go in this is even how I cover up the little words I've put in I'm drawing these words to help remind me of the dialogue that goes in the bubble here. And you don't want that in the final version when you enter in the text. So we're going to erase that out. Instead, like we're not erasing, we're coloring over it with white. Now, this also works in reverse with black. You see these areas over here? These pencil areas? I don't want to waste black ink, so I don't actually color all those in with a marker. Instead, I color it in with a 3B pencil, really dark lead. And we're going to use our pencil tool again over here to fill in with black on the computer. The reason I go to the trouble of coloring in with dark lead is because it gives me an idea of what it's going to look like once I get it all black. But we don't want to waste the ink on doing that. And it actually looks better if you shade it down the computer. This part up here, next to the face, I actually did with ink because I wanted to see what the white spiders were going to look like, but it actually looks better when you do it on the computer because you see over here in that part you got like simpler white shady areas. It's weird. So just go in and color like that. Perfecto. And this is why this part is the most time consuming. And tough areas is one of the areas that you really need a tablet with because you got to go in and color over all of these areas that are ugly basically <laughs> you got to go in and fix whatever needs fixing and however you want it done and it's very time-consuming but I have already done this part for you guys in fact I've nearly almost finished this page already so I'm gonna go to the one that I've already been working on and show you from there so let me just close this one let's see if right let me bring up the one I've already been working on, and there we go. Look at that. <laughs> See how much cleaner it comes out? Oh, I forgot to turn off the screen tone layer. I'm going to turn off all my screen tones that I've already put on because I want to show you guys how to do that in due time. But see, everything's so much neater and prettier looking after you've edited it. Let me show you the difference now. You, I'm going to go and turn off this layer. And see, we're right back to the original page. Not nearly as good looking. Okay guys, just real quick, the next part of the tutorial will be in the link below this video. It will demonstrate demonstrate screen toning in GIMP. So be sure you go check that out because it's a really cool thing to learn that makes your comment look nice. Alright, thanks for viewing.